right over here with a bright smile on stage. Uh, okay, I'm not going to waste too much of time now. Well, he's going to talk on how to create organizational culture for digital transformation by Arthur Francisco Karmazi. He's over here. Please put your hands together, friends, for him. And I would also like to uh, announce that we have one more iPhone 10 to be given away. And we have the winner over here, but I'm going to announce the winner after his session. We have the clicker, please. Uh, the stage is all yours. Microphone. All right, microphone's working. All right, we're all good. Okay, so I am not going to tell you about uh, numbers and all that kind of stuff because that's not what I do. Okay? What we're going to do today is I'm going to tell you a story. Okay? So I'm going to tell you a story. Now, of course, every story has to have its characters. And in this particular case, we have our characters, which are Jack, okay, who is the villain of our story. And Jack, well, basically, Jack is a lizard. Now, do you have lizards here in India? Right, so of course, you know, what do lizards do? They, you know, if, if you're walking along, okay, and you have a lizard, do they go, hey, 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 this guy is like, you know, gonna come over here, should we run? And the other lizard says, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. These uh, human beings, they don't care about us. Do lizards do that in India? No, lizards don't speak English in India. Okay, so, okay, then of course we have Rama. He is the hero of our story. And Rama, of course, is a monkey. He's always trying, always, sometimes he gets himself into trouble, but he's always trying new things. Okay, well, Jack, he's always reacting to things because he's a lizard. Okay, and uh, even if Rama gets in trouble, keeps on trying, never gives up. And, well, basically, he takes responsibility for stuff. Mary. Mary is very smart. Mary, she is really intelligent. And, you know, sometimes when Mary's boss makes decisions, Mary knows that those decisions are not really going to work. But you know what? Mary doesn't have very much courage. And so then Mary doesn't really say much, and so then later on when something bad happens, it's like Mary's thinking, well, I already knew that, okay? But she never spoke up. And so essentially, these are the three characters that we're going to go on a story with. And of course, okay, they go to the CEO, and what does the CEO say? He basically says, we want to digitally transform our organization. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so first of all, let's look at kind of some of the things that digital transformation actually means. First of all, it doesn't mean technology. What it means is it means that we have a better customer experience, okay? That we have improved human performance, okay? You know, like the people that actually are communicating and talking to people. Okay? that we have improved engagement with our people, and of course, that we have more efficient branding and marketing, but also supply chain streamlining. So you can use digital transformation for everything. The thing, though, you got to actually define what it is before you start. So if you're going to do marketing, well, that's great, but do you really know what you're getting into? And see, this is one of the biggest problems that organizations have. They say, we need to digitally transform. Okay, so they get a whole bunch of guys and they start doing a whole bunch of technology without really defining it and without really realizing the investment in time and money that it is going to take to really digitally transform an organization. So let's look at what some of the traps in digital transformation actually are. So first of all, Okay, one of the big things that we get is like there's all these like new technologies out there. You know, you've got all these different things that will give you all sorts of really cool stuff. You've got apps and you've got, you know, digital technology for marketing and then you've got another digital technology for marketing and then you've got all these different things. And so sometimes we just get so overwhelmed that we think, wow, if we get this and we get this and we get this 
and especially the tech guys, the IT guys, really love the tech. So sometimes too much tech is going to be bad, okay? But speed is also important. See, it's oftentimes too slow. If it's too slow, people get bored. Have you ever been bored? That was a question. All right? So, no pre-engagement. If I come up to somebody and I say, hi, what's your name? Shirley. Shirley? Shirley, do you want to get married? I'm already married. Oh, okay. Well, see, now let's say Shirley was single. Do you think that if I just went up to some girl and said, hey, do you want to get married? Do you think they'd say yes? That was a question. Probably not, right? I mean, you know, at least take me out to coffee first or something, right? So what ends up happening is that we don't have a pre-engagement. We don't get our people involved, okay? So they don't really, they're not really aware of what's going to happen. They're not really sure that, oh my gosh, you know, is this going to mean more work? Does it mean that maybe I'm going to lose my job? Okay, so people need to be pre-engaged when we're creating a digital transformation culture, okay? And that also means oftentimes there is no balance between the technology and the human element. We start thinking, oh, hey, chatbots, okay? And Tamara was talking about the chatbots and everything else and, you know, how cool they are. Well, they still haven't completely got to the point where they really understand what you're asking. Have you ever been on there where you ask a question and you get a, some really cool answer, but it has absolutely nothing to do with your question? Okay, so the human experience is still a key factor, and this is where sometimes we end up in the trap where we lose the human element, which is one of the things that basically draws in customers. Now, if we're going to create a culture, okay, oftentimes our culture is misaligned with digital transformation. So that means that if we're going to create digital transformation, it's not just about the technology, it's about disruption. I mean, think about it, okay? You have to think of how to use the technology. If you're going to use it for marketing, how are you going to involve the customers, okay? So again, what Tamara was saying earlier was about emotion. She's absolutely right, okay? So innovation is one of the key factors in achieving digital transformation. And, of course, you have to be people-centered. And you have to, essentially, be agile, right? I mean, you have to be able to move around, okay? Something goes, okay? And then, what happens if it doesn't work? That, that was a question. Okay? If it doesn't work, you've got to be able to really kind of go and, and try something new immediately. So you have to be agile. So, at the same time, you have to be persistent. So, You've got this direction. I've got to set my direction. I've got to make sure I'm going in that direction. But maybe the path may change because new technology comes along, okay? New marketing things, new trends come up, okay? Somebody comes up with a new app that everybody just decides to go to, and we have to be able to deal with it, okay? Now, why is culture important? We did a study a little while ago. And what we found is uh, we found that in an average organizational culture, 100 people do the work of 100 people. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, we found that in a poor organizational culture, 100 people did the work of 68 people. 68 people. Now, I don't know if you, you know, are, are good at math or anything, but if you think about it, if I'm paying... A hundred people for a hundred people's worth of work, and I'm only getting 68%, that means I'm losing 32% of the money that I'm paying for salaries because I'm not getting my money's worth. So ROI is important, right? I mean, all that money could be used for marketing. Now, on the other hand, in a good organizational culture, in a culture where people were engaged, people were excited, people would come in on Monday and it's like, wow, it's Monday, I get to go to work today, okay? And this is where people are basically, in, in those kind of cultures, you've got 151 
100 people did the work of, the, of 151 people. Now, if you look at ROI, think about that. What does that mean? That means that the amount of money that you're spending on your human capital, it, you're getting almost you know, 50, more than 50% more return on investment. Okay? And all of that basically goes back to the idea that we want to plan and develop our culture okay, of digital transformation, but we've got to make sure that we have the speed, okay, and we've got to be able to change, and if we don't have feedback, we can't keep it straight. We can't uh, uh, get to where we're trying to go. Okay? And so finally, a lot of people just say, you know what? Let's just wait. Let's just wait and see. Because, you know, there's all this technology. It's coming. Let's just wait. Okay? On the other hand, the hero, it's like, well, if I need to be a hero, I need to move now, right? I mean, because if you don't, what's a hero? Give me, do you know what a hero is? What's a superhero? You guys like Spider-Man? You like Spider-Man? Okay, why is Spider-Man a superhero? Because he wears tights? No. Is it because Spider-Man helps people? No, you help people too, right? Sometimes, okay? Is it because Spider-Man has superpowers? No, because you can also be a supervillain with superpowers, can't you? And even you can even be a super underachiever because you have superpowers and don't use them, right? So what, would, what if, like, imagine this. Let's say Spider-Man is in front of a, uh, one of these convenience stores, right? And he's ready there to catch shoplifters. And that's all he does. So he is kind of like this super security guard. Is Spider-Man still a superhero? That was a question. See, in order to be a superhero, you have to have a supervillain, right? You have to have a big problem. How many of you have big problems? That, that was a question, okay? You got one? Okay, sir, you have the opportunity to be a superhero. Yeah. Okay, now how many of you have medium problems? Okay, a few over there. Okay, you guys get to be medium heroes. Anybody have small problems? Small problems, okay, over here, all right? So you guys get to be small heroes. And I guess the rest of you, no problems at all. Must be nice. Okay, so... Now, as our heroes move forward, the first thing that they find is the scroll of environment. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, you guys got to help me out, all right? So anytime Ram and his buddies, they find something that's going to help them to move forward, I need you to kind of help me say, dun, dun, dun. Can you do that? All right, ready? The scroll of environment. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and so with the scroll of environment, okay, you find that environment basically affects you. See, wherever you are, if you're here, okay, if this is you, and these are your friends, you go into any group, whether it's work, okay, or whether you're friends or anything, basically these people affect you, but you are also affecting them. So, how many of you have friends? Okay, a few of you. Okay. Don't worry, sir. I'm sure you can make some friends, okay? And, if, and I don't mean Facebook friends. I mean real ones, okay? So if you have friends, do you notice that you behave differently when you're with your friends than you do when you are with uh, people at work? Do you notice that? Okay. Do you purposely do it? You're like, oh, no, today I'm going to behave like this because I'm like here. No. Each group brings out different facets of who you are. Even different groups of friends bring out different facets of who you are, right? Okay, so environment is the key to making an organizational culture that supports success. But let me ask you a question, okay? Um, what do, what, okay, what, 
what do you do when you go out with your friends? So you, okay, you watch movies, all right? Okay, and after the movie, do you do anything? Yeah, I go to the bar. Go to the bar? I go to the bar. Go to the bar, you talk about stuff? Of course I do. Okay, and what kind of things do you talk about? A lot of things, I mean, uh, planning new trips, that never happens. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, when you're talking, you know, after the movies, you're talking, are you like super excited? Or are you kind of like relaxed? It's like very pensive. I mean, what? Chill? Hyperactive. Extremely excited. It's extremely excited. Okay, so let's just say that she goes with the same friends, same bars, same things, talks about exactly the same thing. But instead of being extremely excited, she's more like, you know, very pensive. You know, I was really thinking about that. Okay? Is it going to affect how her friends in that group react? That, that was a question. Okay, so it will, right? Okay, but it's only, she only changed one thing. She only changed one thing. So if we can change, if we know what to change, we can affect our organizational culture. So everything else being the same, what who, have you, have you ever been in a situation where you are, um, where you have the same problems happening over and over again in different jobs? Have any of you have had different jobs? Okay, a few, okay. So have you ever had some of the same problems over and over again, you, no matter what job you've ever had? Have you ever had that? Okay, so you know, you know what the common denominator is? Me. Exactly, you, because no matter where you go, there you are. And so now the next thing that Rama finds, okay, the sword of awareness. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so what is the sword of awareness? So basically, when we are aware of the kind of feedback that we get, okay, then we are able to basically de determine whether we're doing a good job or not a good job we're able to see more of a direction of what we should do or shouldn't do. Would you agree with that? Okay, feedback is good, right? Here's the problem. Most organizations, what they do is they give you feedback every quarter or every year. So what ends up happening is like at the right, like one month before your annual review, oh, I better actually do something important. But what happened to the other 11 months? And nobody remembers them anyway, even if you did all those great things. You remember how, you know, like you've, you're doing all these really great things, and then you do that one thing, and everybody only remembers that one bad thing that you did. Right? So we need to have consistent and regular feedback. Why? Because we are in the PFB era, post-Facebook. And the PFB era basically means that now we, as human beings, need everything now. It's instant, instant message, okay, instant gratification. You know that you used to be much more tolerant with your bosses 15 years ago? Your boss could do something that was, you know, your boss could be a little bit of an asshole, and then he would still be okay. But now, your boss is an asshole, <laughs> no problem. I got my phone right here, okay? I'm gonna post a picture of a kitten. And you watch, oh, 20 likes in five minutes. Yeah, I am awesome. Okay, you have control over your emotional gratification. You have a voice, okay? You have the potential to fill your motivation on your own terms. You don't need your boss anymore. So now, the stakes have changed. Leadership is much more important, and feedback needs to be instant. So, right now, how is this? Because right now, how many of you are on Facebook or Instagram? Okay, so if you want a copy of this, okay, right now I'm on Instagram Live, so find me at hashtag Arthur Carmazzi. All right, and don't forget to follow. All right, now, why are you on Instagram and Facebook? Is it just because of marketing? But even if it is, you know what? 
you still go and check, oh, how many likes did I get? Oh, how many comments? And you read the comments and stuff, right? Oh, oh, how, how many people shared? Whoa, people shared. That's so awesome, right? So when you are constantly looking at these things, you know why? Because that's measurement. It's validation of who you are, of what you do. And we as human beings are looking for that. We're looking for that validation. Oh, how am I doing? And we're doing it on a regular basis. Why? Because it's addictive. We want that feedback regularly. And so we even come up with more creative ways to basically get more positive feedback. Now imagine if that could be harnessed and used in an organization that is essentially going through change. Digital transformation. Acceptance of new Different things that you never thought you needed to do before. And so you need to gamify your feedback. Just like Facebook and Instagram gamify your life. So the feedback that you get affects your competence. The feedback that you get affects your competence or for that matter, the competence and even the attitudes of people in your organization. And if you have the competencies and the attitudes change, is it possible that your organizational culture will also be affected? So let me ask you a question. How many of you used to be children? Okay, got like three in the back. All right, a few, all right, okay. I used to be a child. You, no, really, it's true. Um, and I have these problems with my brain. I have ADHD and dyslexia, all right? So I um, went to school, and I didn't really do so good in school. In fact, the teachers always used to compare me to the other students. And so one day, they called up my parents, and they said, Mr. and Mrs. Karmazi, your son Arthur is special. Okay, code word for stupid. And we would like to put him in the special children's class. And so, off I go. And in this special kids class, there's Mrs. Kelly. And she's so sweet. And she's so kind. She's always smiling. And, you know, she just makes me feel like I am accepted. That it's okay to be stupid. But then, the school changed the rules. They said, oh, sorry. Before you can go to high school, you need an algebra class. Algebra? Oh my gosh. Isn't that like math for smart kids? I can't do that. Okay, so I had to go. So off I went. And so now, here I am in this algebra class. What do you think I got on my first report card? That was a question. I got an F. Of course I got an F. I was a stupid kid. Okay, I got an F. And the only difference was that Mr. Bacchus, he had this really, really shiny bald head. And he, would, he sat down with me and he said, Arthur, okay, can you figure out this problem? And he put some simple algebra problem on the board. And then, of course, I went to do what they always tell you to do, show your work. And he says, no, 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 don't show your work. Just look at it and tell me the answer. And I said, okay, it's this. And he said, yes, that's right. Okay, then he put another one up there, and he said, tell me the answer. And I said, it's this. And he says, that's right. And it turns out, okay, that Mr. Bacchus was going to create this game. And he says, I need you to volunteer on Friday, because we're going to play this game where you're going to basically be able to compete with the other kids on the same thing. And I think you'll do really good. Okay. So, turns out I'm good at this game. But here's the thing. I'm good at this game in front of an entire class of my peers. And then after about three weeks, these peers are starting to come up to me and saying, oh my gosh, Arthur, can you help me with my homework? And I'm thinking, these people think I'm smart. Oh no, I, you know, and I make something up. You know, my mom's waiting, sorry. Until one day, Lynn Puchowski, this beautiful eighth grade girl, comes up and says, uh, Arthur, can you help me with my homework? And I'm like, uh, yeah. 
and I learned to be smart. See, the thing is that after you have an environment that supports your success, that supports how you succeed, because not everybody succeeds in the same way. And when we're talking about digital transformation, not everybody is going to understand it. Not everybody is going to accept it. But how can we get people to be successful in the process of digital transformation? Because we have, I mean, you've, you, you noticed this, right? In some environments, you are extremely competent. You may be a great leader with your kids, for example. But then you go to work and you suck. Or maybe, you know, you're really good at being patient in some environments and really not patient in others. Okay? And so now our heroes move forward, and there they see the armor of trust. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, come on, guys. Ready? One more time. The armor of trust. Dun, dun, dun. So let's look at the villain of our story. So why does Jack, the villain, react? Okay? Have you ever been in a situation where you don't feel valued? Have you ever been in a situation where people, you know, say things and, and you feel that they don't respect you? Have you ever been in a situation where you feel misunderstood? Or maybe not clear? Do you react? So you are sometimes the villain of this story. And sometimes, have you ever found yourself, you know, it's just not worth it to say anything. Sometimes, you know, it's just, why don't you just tell me what to do? That way, I'm not going to worry about getting blamed. Right? You know, it's just not safe. If I say something, then maybe, you know, there's conflict. You know, somebody's going to, you know, I don't want to deal with it. Better I just keep quiet. Has that ever happened? Because then, sometimes, you are the observer. And other times, you understand what's going on. You're ready to go. You have clarity. You are ready to move forward, and then you are the hero of this story. But measurement starts with what culture you have. Do you know right now what, orga what type of organizational culture you have? Are you familiar with what level of engagement and, and action and trust you have in your organization right now? Do you know? Because you have to, in order to move up, you have to have a benchmark. And so there's a tool okay, that I recommend, which is the Culture Evolution Assessment. So this basically gives you the foundations, it benchmarks your organizational culture. Go ahead, take a picture, quick. So when you're benchmarking your organizational culture, you know where you are so that you can move up. And then basically it, it allows you to measure as you improve. Okay? So how do we build disruption? Right? Oftentimes people have skills, but... I mean, have you ever been in a situation you know what to do, but why should I work so hard? I mean, is, do people really appreciate me? I don't know, man. You know, I've got this, I, I have these ideas, because you have to have ideas, right? In order for digital transformation, you have to be disruptive. You have to think of stuff that other people, your competitors, aren't thinking of. Basically, innovation, disruption, all of this stuff basically goes back to one thing. Trust. You need to feel trusted. Now, what's one of the number one killers of trust? It's right there. Have you ever been blamed? Anybody ever been blamed? Nobody? Really? How do you feel when you're blamed? Do you feel like, oh, okay, now I'm really motivated to go and solve this problem? Thank you for blaming me. No. When we get blamed, we get frustrated, we start reacting, we become the lizard. 
we start to look for reasons, even though we may know we're wrong, we still look for reasons why we can justify it. Well, if they wouldn't have shown me this in the first place, if they would have given me the right numbers in the first place, I would have been fine. We're, when we get blamed, we use the lizard part of our brain because we're reacting. When we get blamed, we lose trust. Things don't become safe anymore. We start thinking like, oh, man, you know, if I say something, oh, I would be cool, but, you know, what if it goes wrong? Innovation, lame. Innovation, nah, it's not worth it. Just wait for my bosses to tell me what to do. Play it safe. So what do we need to do? We need to create a no-blame Zone, no blame zone, right? So if you want to download the sign and some instructions for the no blame zone, go to www.noblame.zone. That's www.noblame.zone. Okay, so when we get this, okay, you feel safe, right? If you're in a situation where you're not blamed, I want you to try something, right? I want you to try something. I want you to smile. Just go like this. Yeah, no, sir, even you, yes. <laughs> okay, smile, smile like this, okay. Now, look at somebody next to you, okay, and say, are you blaming? While you're smiling, say that. Say that, okay, while you're smiling, come on, try it, say it. Are you blaming? I can see you, you're not smiling. <laughs> okay, so, I want you to f just, just feel that for a moment. Do you notice that when you're laughing, you're actually more creative? And there's a physical reason for that. And when we're afraid, we are not creative. Okay? We have different chemicals in our brain that affect our creativity. Okay? So when you're laughing, you are more able to solve problems than when you are reacting to blame. So. If somebody, if, if you download the sign, you basically tell people, hey, we're not going to have this, we're not going to do blame anymore, we're just going to have some fun with blame, okay? And instead of blaming, okay, if you catch somebody blaming, you're just going to say, hey, are you blaming? Okay? And you kind of organize this with your, with the people at work, you are going to see some greater effect. Now, there's more to it, but you can download the sign, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay? So... More positive reinforcement of all of the positive behaviors that we do, okay, are also going to affect how we feel, okay? But here's the thing. Most of the time, we measure KPIs. Do you notice that? What have you achieved? What have you finished? Well, how long does it take to finish a KPI? Can you finish a KPI in a day? Not usually. Can you finish a KPI in a week? Maybe, but not often. Usually KPIs are going to be drawn out to larger amounts of time, maybe a month, maybe a quarter, maybe even a, 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 um, bi-yearly. But can you wait that long? I mean, right now, think about it. You want instant gratification. You want to see things now. If you have to wait so long to get the feedback on your KPIs to know how you're doing, by the time you've already missed the KPIs, okay, it's like, oh, I missed it, so therefore I already know how I'm doing. But what if you work backwards? What if you identified the behaviors you needed for innovation, for disruption, for human connection. If you identified all of those behaviors and instead of creating KPI-based measurement, which you can still do, but in, be, in between that, if you created behavior measurement, where you would measure the behaviors of the things that you know are going to achieve the results. So if you take your best people that are already taking the results and you identify those behaviors from multiple <laughs> sections, okay, 
That means that they are in a situation where they are moving towards achieving that goal. Okay? So, removing the feedback barriers, you can do that with creating a theme. You may have some fun. Themes make things different, so just change it up a little bit. Talk about superheroes, talk about secret agents, talk about whatever, okay? But change it up and measure regularly. Here is another app that you can use with a dashboard. It's called Twadly. It basically helps you to, within 20 seconds, instantly measure behavior according to specific values or attitudes or um, behaviors that you want to achieve. Now, one of the foundations of trust, the key to why a lot of times people don't really feel very good about why, what they're doing and why they don't really move forward with innovation is because people don't understand each other. They don't understand each other's clarity-getting process. So this is called the brain's ambiguity relief process. It's a genetic process that basically helps you to get clarity. Not your personality. But let me just try to briefly explain what some of these are. Okay? So first of all, chaotic processing. So if you have chaotic processing, this basically means that you are needing to take action, move, ask people questions. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Take action, move on things, and then you get clarity. If you, okay, so this is basically how it works. Get a little information, get some action, a little bit of kind of just figure out how it's going along, maybe a little more information, more action, 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 action. So these are people that oftentimes people misunderstand because they jump into things. Or because they shape and reshape things, people think they're changing their mind. But they're not. Okay, then you've got relational processing. Here, everything is connected but it's connected through data and information. It's connected in such a way where basically the more information you get, the more options that you see, and the more options that you see, then it's easier to, ah, okay, option number two, that's the one we want, and then you take action. And this one, basically, you need lots of information, 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 kind of analyze which are the better options, then move on it. Now, the linear processing, okay, this one, basically deals with structure. In order for you to get clarity, your brain needs to find structure or create structure. If there's no structure, have you ever been in a situation where you, there's no structure and you think, oh my gosh, I need more structure. There's no, you know, these people aren't doing it. Or if you're chaotic processing, oh my gosh, there's too much structure. So linear process needs structure in order to get clarity. I'm so sorry I'm interrupting. We just have a minute more, please. Okay, so let me just quickly, okay, Thank we're just you. gonna finish this. Give you, if you want to find out more about this, I'm gonna give you the actual um, test. You can go to coloredbrain.com and you can use this code to take the test for free. Okay, so take a picture, write it down, whatever, this is the code. It'll allow you to take the test for free. Okay. And here, take a picture of this. These are the different things that we had talked about that'll give you some ability to move forward on changing your organizational culture and doing the measurement that is required. So you take a picture of that. And if there's any questions, here I am. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hats off to the storyteller. Let's hear it once again. So full of energy. Thank you so much. I would request you to be here for a couple of more seconds. And I would like to invite on stage the founder and CEO and MD of Manthan, Mr. Atul Jalan, to please present the token of gratitude. Thank you.